Betty McNitt here, your crochet mama. Thanks for showing up. Tonight I'm going to be working on my six day ridgy ditch blanket. And um, this is, just so you know, not a tutorial. This is a live video for engagement. And you're welcome to follow along and make the whole thing with me if you like. Um, but uh, all the instruction was way, way back in the early um, days of the video, so you're probably not going to get a lot of instruction today. I'm just saying that because people seem to be expecting that and um, get kind of negative. So any negative um, comments on anywhere get you deleted and I because I just can't. Life's too short. I'm not going to, I'm I'm just not, you can't come onto my channel and just talk to me like, you know, um, abusively. So I don't put up with that. So anyways, that's been happening a lot and, um, I'm just not having it. So if that's how you operate, then just follow somebody else, make something else. I, you know, I don't care anymore. <laughs> um, anyways. Let's crochet. Gosh darn it. <laughs> hey, Andrew. Oh, I know. This is what I'm going to be working on. Thank you, my dear, tonight. Let's see. How many strips do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I think I need a total of 23. So I have like, I don't know, how many is that to go? Um, 12, 13, 14, something like that. A lot. I've got a long way to go. Um, I'm going to put this overhead on TikTok and I'm going to flip my screen. Um, but before I crochet, I just thought it might be fun to show you what I picked up on the beach today. I went down to the beach. It was like 20 something degrees down there. It really didn't feel too bad bad. Um, hold on. There we go. Um, it really didn't, it really didn't feel too bad down there, honestly. Um, except it just depends on like which way the wind is blowing so if you walk this way, the wind's blowing in your face, it feels terrible. If you walk the other way, the wind's behind you, it doesn't feel so bad. Um, you know, it's much more tolerable. But of course, if you walk any way you walk, you have to walk the other way to get back. So either way, you end up walking in whatever. But I didn't pick up a lot, but this is what I picked up. When it gets, when we have cold snaps like this, then you see a lot of like whelk shells like this. I don't usually pick up broken ones, but I like the way this looked. And then I stick them in my plants. Here's another one. This is just a smaller one. Let me flip this so people on YouTube can see. This is, um, when they go to the left like that, it's called a lightning whelk. So the lightning whelks are the only ones that go to the left. They open up to the left like that. And then this is like a, it's not a shark eye, but um, I like picking up the shark eyes. There were a lot of those up. Let's see, here's a shark eye. The last, Oh, I wonder if there's something in there because it's a little stinky. No. Nope. I checked them all for critters before I brought them up. Yeah, I picked up two of these little guys. The first time I've ever seen these. And then this is really, really tiny. I'm not sure exactly what this is. This is some kind of um, whelk. It's different than these two. I'll have to look it up in my book. But look, it's got a little like scallop stuck to it. So there were a lot of um, shells like that that had like little critters like 
stuck on the side to them. I'll hold it up a little closer to the phone so you all can see. So that's what I picked up today at the beach. <coughs> Honestly, I think it was a mistake to go out there because it was so ding-dong cold. <laughs> um, and I haven't been feeling great. All right, here's my project. Where did I leave off? Looks like I finished on row four. Hi, Brianne. So let's see how far I get tonight going this way. This is the six day rigid ditch blanket been working on it. I think this is my eighth day of actually crocheting the blanket. I had a few days of swatching and preparation and um, I did a lot of back and forth choosing colors and um, you can always go back to the beginning of the replays if you want to see all that and see how I measured it and see me do the stitches a little bit slower but this is just busy work at this point. Here's row five is a double crochet row. And then row six is the ridge row that <clears throat> creates this little texture. Oh, and I'm using cheer. Yeah, I definitely need some cheer. Because I'm mad. <laughs> hey, Andrew, how's everything going with you? Hi, thanks for following. When it's cold like this for a long time here, these houses aren't used to extended periods of cold and a lot of the houses around me are like vacation houses. So there's no one in them. So when they leave in at the end of the summer, they winterize their houses and they put antifreeze in their um in their toilets and in their water lines so that their pipes don't freeze in this kind of weather but because I'm actually living here I can only turn off like I can turn off my outside water like I have an outdoor shower and a um you know like my garden hose uh underneath the house and I can turn those off when it gets cold like this but I'm living in here, so I can't, you know, like turn off all my water and protect the pipes from freezing. I have to keep the water running all the time and to keep it from freezing up. And I have to keep heaters going, you know, under the sinks to keep the pipes warm and stuff like that. So that's kind of, um, that's a little stressful because last year it froze and, um, that was a mess. 
my daughter was here and our pipes froze and burst on Christmas Day. I need to call the fire department. Hi, Simply Me, Angie D. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm happy with these colors. I was a little, uh, a little unsure at first, questioning a little bit what I was doing. I live on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. I'm on the third row, so I'm just a very short walk to the beach. It was icy today on the beach overpass. Yeah, there I'm I mean, I've been pretty good this year. Um, but I've been, you know, I've had my water running for like, I don't know, days and days. And I usually start it like if it gets to like about, you know, starts hitting 33, 34, 33, I'll turn it on just in case. You're in North Carolina too, Wanda. Outer Banks is beautiful. I love it here. It's really quiet this time of year. There's not a lot of people here. And um, it's just very peaceful. I get a lot of crocheting done. I haven't been feeling great, so I've just been resting um, a lot. And um, I got a new TV <laughs> right before Christmas, and it's huge. So I've just been watching my shows, and there's nothing really good on. Sometimes I just turn the music on the TV and the ambient it has really pretty like ambient artwork that pops up when you walk into the room. Yeah, I've been sick for a couple weeks actually. I I don't think I'm actively sick anymore, but I still have a cough and I just can't shake it. And it's been a couple weeks and um my sister was at me to go to the doctor last week and I didn't go. I keep thinking I'm going to wake up and be fine. But um, it's just that, you know, nagging, like tickle, cough. I still have like the post nasal drip. And I'm just really tired. Thankfully, I can work whenever I want and not work whenever I don't feel like it and sleep whenever I feel like it and work in the middle of the night if I can't sleep. I don't do that as much as I used to. I used to just be like, oh, I can't sleep. I'll just get up and work. But I've just noticed as I get older, it does not feel good to have like been up all night. <laughs> <coughs> yeah I'm sure my friend had to go to the doctor I think I probably need like a nebulizer or I don't really know what I need I should probably just call my doctor in the morning it's been like three weeks at this point close to three weeks and I was I was doing so good I was at my friend's and they were all getting sick, but they were like, they would get sick and they would get better. You know, it was just like one kind of bad day of sniffles and sore throat and then they would be better. And I was like, um, I was doing all the preventative things and I was like, I'm so proud of myself. I haven't gotten sick. I haven't gotten sick. And I thought, you know, I would feel it coming on and I would like drink my tea and and drink my hydration and I was taking all this stuff and I was like 
I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get it. And then I got it and I just could not shake it. I just could not shake it. I spent like two days in bed at her house. And after that, I was like, I'm just going to make my way home. I'm not, I was going to stay another three or four days and help her. But I was not being any help to her at all. I was just going through tissues. This is the six day Ridgy Ditch blanket. It's basically the six day kid blanket. Um, all the, it's got a bunch of different versions where you change colors on different rows. And this one's called the Ridgy Ditch. Hi, Hessa. Thank you for stopping by. Yeah, you know, I had an inhaler when I was, um, when we had the, all the air quality issues with the wildfires over the summer. Are you retired? Um, I, I'm not retired, but I work for myself. I'm self-employed, so I do what I, whatever I whatever I want. Thank you so much, Hessa. How have you been? What have you been working on? Yeah, I should cut people some slack because people have been trolling me over on YouTube and it's like every time I get a notification, I'm like afraid to go over there, but probably everybody's feeling like crap and everyone's sick. Working on my second Superstar blanket, loving every stitch of it again the second time around. Oh, thank you. I love the Superstar. That is my favorite of this version of the star when I um when I go to make a star that's the one I usually gravitate to I just love them I just did a variation um with 16 points for my membership community and goodness they are so pretty I made one for my um my friend's new baby girl that I was just talking about and helping out and they are really pretty baby blankets the 16 point superstar it has a little I had to fiddle with it a little bit to get it to lay flat so it's just a little different than the um, 14 point superstar and it has its own edge I have COPD so I have two inhalers I've never really had breathing issues, but I noticed over the summer when we had that, you know, when we had all that air quality um, and the smoke from the wire wildfires was like really thick down here and the air quality was really bad. I couldn't go outside. I'm loving the test knit of the Ridgy Superstar. Oh, right. Okay. Now I'm putting the name together. <laughs> I um I need to send you all an email um and just check in and see how everyone's doing. I think most of the tests have wrapped up or um people are pretty pretty far along on them. Most of the kinks seem like they've been worked out. The um, Superstar was the really hard one. That's okay. Cindy Hammond says 14 rows. What do you mean, Cindy?
Yeah, I've just, I've been having a difficult time being patient. Um, and I know it's because I'm not feeling well and I'm grouchy, but I also feel like people have been a little extra spicy lately. Behind the scenes, I've been working on a granny square, um, some granny square projects, six day granny squares, and I feel kind of excited about them. Um, I'm calling them chaos, the chaos version, and I don't know, something about that name and having it be chaos is feels like therapeutic to me right now. <laughs> Like, let's just mix it all up. Hello, Australia. I noticed with the other project that I'm working on, I wrote it all up before I made it. And then I didn't even follow my own pattern. I changed my mind in the middle and now I'm a little stuck because I didn't do what I said I was going to do. And I had logic, you know, I was like thinking with logic when I wrote it up, I didn't just slap it on the page like I sometimes do. I thought it through. I measured. I did math. And then I just started crocheting. And I didn't follow what I had set out to do. So we'll see how that goes. Can I ask what the colorful deodorant stick looking things are? Are they crochet related? Yes, these are, um, this is aromatherapy stitch balm. It's from a company called Scented Stitches. I have an affiliate link in my bio if you're interested in it. And they, um, they're a uh, stitch balm. You put it on your finger where you tension the yarn and the balm ends up in the yarn and it scents your project with essential oils, but it also just kind of smells really nice while you're working. People have asked me like, how does it hold up? Does it wash out? And the answer is, I don't know because I haven't gotten that far with them. But I like the aroma and I like um, I like using intentionality when I create something. So like they have four different scents. This one's cheer, confidence, calm, and power. And I like when I'm, um, crocheting something to like set an intention for how I want to feel while I'm working on it and what kind of energy I want to have while I'm working on it. Um, this one is getting a lot of energy of my complaining today, but, um, <laughs> um, yeah, I chose, uh, the cheer scent because I felt, um, uh, excited about the colors. Like I had, when I was going through the process of choosing my colors, I ended up, uh, choosing the colors that I felt excited about. If 
it does wash out. You don't have to wash it out if you don't want to, right? No, you don't have to. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I kind of choose colors from my gut sometimes. Um, people always say, oh, you're so great with color, but I'm really not. I don't have logic. Sometimes I purposely put colors together that I think don't go together just so I can say to people, see, it's okay. It looks fine. Like this coral next to this purple. Those don't go. <laughs> Yeah, I care more about the intentionality and the feeling of this um, cheer. And I'm, I'm glad I was kind of reminded of that because I do need cheer right now. I do need to be cheered up. So let me just take that in. Who cares if they don't um, go together? You're just having fun. Exactly. People need to get the sticks out of their you-know-whats with the colors. I saw, um, I, I saw a reel on Instagram recently that was like how to avoid bad color combinations. And I just so badly wanted to like put together all the colors they said not to do it together. <laughs> just to be a rebel. Like who's to say there's a bad color combination, you know? I see it in my, um, in the six day blanket group all the time, people second guessing their color choices and just agonizing over the colors and what order should they go in and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, just try it. One of the things I really like is like, um, sometimes when I'm doing colors, I don't play in the sequence because I like to see how the yellow looks next to the purple and next to the coral and next to like, I like the way they look when they are next to different, different colors. All right. This is the ridgy row. So it's actually exactly the same as the regular row six with the exception of we are working the double crochets as front post double crochet instead of regular double crochet. And then when you get to the top where it's three double crochet in the same stitch, you work those three double crochet into the top of the stitch instead of around the post. And that's the only difference in, um, that's the, that's the only difference between this and the regular six day kid blanket. Actually that texture stitch and changing the color on the same on the same row so it just gives it that you have that contrasting the contrasting color and the stitch and some people use cake yarn and they don't worry about color changes and they do this um variation and it comes out fantastic so you don't have to change colors but that is what makes this the six day ridgy didge as opposed to just the regular six day kid blanket. Do it girl, prove them wrong. I know I want to. Well, I, um, the chaos project that I'm working on now, it's all my leftovers and I didn't want to do leftovers. I wanted to do like real yarn, you know, and I just, when I was, not feeling well. I was like, I, I kind of was in between big projects. I had this and I was like, let me get something else out to work on. And I just started working on that. And it was kind of therapeutic because I was, you know, not feeling great. And it was something I could just, it's got colors that nobody in their right mind would ever put together. And they're like the leftover colors 
from all those ogos that I broke down to make those blankets for my, um, my friend, that, you know, the one that matched her wallpaper for her Airbnb. It was all the colors that I took out of those ogos that I didn't use for her blanket and the leftovers from that and, you know, just a bunch of, a bunch of ogos. I had hundreds of those ogos and, um, I had pulled a bunch, I had pulled out the colors that I wanted for some different projects. And, um, and then I was left with like a big Rubbermaid bin of the leftovers. So I was like, I'm going to do chaos with this. I'm going to make something chaotic. And so that's what I did. And it's like, there's like a burgundy in there and there's also a dark purple and then there's like a mint green and a dark rose pink and um, a bright lipstick pink. Um, it's just, it's real different. It's real different and I love it. I really love how it's coming out. I just wish I had read my own directions a little bit more thoroughly instead of just, um, you know, abandoning my plan in the middle of the creative process and being like, nope, I'm not going to do what I said. See how I'm a rebel. Nobody can tell me what to do. I can't even tell myself what to do. I don't even listen to my own self. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then in that center one where you do the three double crochet, you do them into the top of the stitch. Hey, Taylor, what's up? No worries. I answered a Betty or Beth. <coughs> I'm at the point now where pe when people call me Beth, I'm like, do they know me in real life? <laughs> I get worried. <laughs> I'm like, uh-oh, who is it? And somehow I have this idea that, like, I lead two separate lives. In one, my one life, I'm Betty McNitt, and in the other life, I'm my other, my, you know, my regular self, Beth. Just boring old basic Beth. And, um, yeah. And then somebody, like, in real life who I know just as Beth and I don't realize that they're like watching me on Facebook and following me on Facebook and watching me go live and crochet. And they're like, hmm, what is she making today? You know? And I'm like, Oh, okay. Like my lives are not that separate. I'm actually just one person. <laughs> I just started my first six day star blanket. Oh, thank you, my dear. That's so kind of you to say so. I've been having to mute people over there because they're being mean. So if you have a question, just be nice and ask your question. Don't be mean to me. <laughs> I know some of my, some of the star videos, the star blanket videos are old and they're from before I updated the pattern with counts, it didn't used to have stitch counts. Um, and then the pattern's been updated like twice since I made those videos. So I really should make new videos. And I, um, I, I don't think I can fight it. There are just going to be people who want the video and they don't care about the pattern. And so I need to update those. But golly gee, cut me some slack. When repeating steps two to seven on the star blanket, do we increase doubles on step two? Step two. So when you look at the pattern and you see those numbers that are in parentheses, the first time you do the repeat, it says four and then it has a parentheses and it has a bunch of numbers. Um, when you come back again to that row, cross out the four and then go to the first number inside the parentheses, and that will tell you how many. 
double crochet to do and then so you do that one and then cross it out and then the next time you re get to that row when you repeat that row look at the third number and the third number will give you how many double crochet you're supposed to do the increases are um, it increases at the peak with the five yeah Yeah, that's how we do that outside of the Amigurumi world. <coughs> and I tried to make it so that you could, um, you know, oh, see, I'm, you don't do five on this one. You only do three. I tried to make it so it would be like really easy to repeat and and understand the pattern of it. And just the only thing that changes is the counts rather than write out, you know, row and row, another row, another row, you know, and have these pages and pages of rows. So this way you just have the repeat. It basically does the same thing, you know, over and over again. It's just the numbers are changing. So I'm going to update it again. And I'm going to include the number of clusters because people ask me about that. And I just felt like it wasn't really needed because if you have the stitch counts correct in the single crochet round, it should work out. You skip two and three double crochet and you'll have the right number of clusters. But I am finding that there are people that just like they just need to know how many clusters they're supposed to have. Otherwise, they start getting caught up in, um, you know, having the correct number of stitches in the row below and that just isn't really a helpful um, uh, way to think about the blanket. Oh, you wanted to know. Oh, yes. Thank you. 14, 14 stripes is how many I have left to do, but it'll be 13 after this one that I'm doing here after this yellow one. Just join the Facebook community. Everyone is so welcoming in community. Oh, well, we're really, we're really glad to have you. And I do work really hard to keep my communities positive. I really do. Because, you know, a lot of us are struggling. And this is meant to be a therapeutic hobby to help us feel better and help us feel good and add color and art and joy to our lives and do things with our hands that make our brains feel better and all that good stuff. And it's not like, it's not worth talking to each other like snarky. I don't, I don't do that. But we're really happy to have you. So my, um, I have a paid community as well. It's called the Betty McNittiverse and I do, uh, zoom calls in there. So I, I zoom with people and it's a small ish group. Hi, Amy. My sister's here. <coughs> um, it's a lovely group, but this, this week coming up in the Betty McNittiverse, um, on, uh, Tuesday, I'm doing a design workshop class, and that is where I bring my advisory council in. I call them and um, and I say, "What do you guys think of this? What do you think of that? How should I do this? What should I do with that?" Um, the last thing they advised me on, they said I should release this pocket shawl that I whipped up that I thought no one's going to want this except for like the one person that asked for it. And they were like, Oh no, you should um, definitely release that. So um, I've got that going out in there and then I'm going to talk to them about the chaos project I'm working on. Thanks for your subscription, Amy.
<clears throat> and then what else? Oh, the six day star blanket ponchos. People have been bugging me for that. And that's another one where my opinion is like, I don't think these are going to look nice, but y'all do you. Um, so I've been working on, uh, I've been working on those. I'm going to try and get those out into the community this week for people to start playing around with. Uh, what else did I say I was going to work on in the design workshop? Most of it is just like working on writing up this stuff. Oh, I have patterns that are out there being tested. The star, Ridgy Didge star, Superstar, and Supernova. So hopefully those will be coming out quick. Thanks for sharing the live. <coughs> when I get to the end of the row, I'll put the link for the membership. I'm a little bit behind from being sick. Um, I don't have my meetings posted up in there, but we usually end up meeting um, about once a week, sometimes a little less, sometimes more, just depending on what I have going on. Um, but I do a twice a month, I do a crochet and connect, which you can also bring your knitting, but very few people do. Um, every once in a while I want to knit and I haven't knitted in a while, but I do have, I'm going to start scheduling more knitting time in the McKnitiverse since my name is Betty McKnit. <coughs> so I do crochet and connect twice a month on Mondays and I alternate AM and PM so that I can hit different uh, time zones. And then I do a design workshop. It, that one really fluctuates. It just depends on what my creative juices are doing. Sometimes we don't meet as much. It's just me posting content in there. Like, like the chaos blanket that I'm working on. Like I have it all written up. I have a version of it all written up, but not worked through. And so once I do that, once I write it up, I'll put a draft copy up in there for people to play around with if they want to. So I'll be doing that with the ponchos probably this week. Um, let's see. And what else? And then like, Sometimes towards the end of the month, I do like a whip roundup where it's like, bring something you're working on and finish it up, you know, time to weave in the tails or whatever. Sometimes I do that towards like the end of the month. And then once a month, I do like a self-care check-in where um, we learn like somatic exercises, hand stretches, um, things like, um, like what I was talking about with the aromatherapy, where we bring intentionality to our projects so we can like feel good and bring more joy, um, to, to our work and really enjoy our crochet more and more. Angie says, since my shoulder surgery, oh, that's right. I forgot you said you had shoulder surgery crocheting as much as I can, but really I'm doing a lot of making hats on my circular knitting machine. It's getting easier to crochet. I'm glad to hear about that. Well, I stopped to drink my tea, but I didn't drop my link. That's all right. I'll do it at the end of the row. 
Oh, I had this that I was, I had put here to remind myself to balm up my finger halfway across because I just was doing it at the ends. I had one of those hat machines and I could not get the hang of it. It was not fun for me. I honestly, I could knit by hand a hat or crochet, maybe not knit, but I could crochet a hat faster than I could do one on that knitting machine because I kept dropping the stitches and then I had a difficult time um, getting it off of the the getting it off of the thing and I just I didn't enjoy it I gave it away I thought oh I'm just gonna tear up my stash with this I did not tear up any stuff and my hats were really small I couldn't even fit them on my head I definitely did something wrong I see people with like the drill where they just, they have the drill and the drill cranks the thing for them and they whip up hats really fast and I guess I'm only good at making six day blankets. It's a learning curve. Yeah. Well, maybe that was part of it too. I just didn't really. invest I know somebody was making fun of me on Facebook one day she like reposted my um, announcement about my one of my patterns and she was like what is with this lady she just takes these same stitches and does the same thing over and over again <laughs> Like, well, that's how I do it. <coughs> Amy, are you crocheting? What are you working on? Amy has more blankets going than I do, Andrew. She's got a ridgy ditch, and then she just bought um, more yarn for another man blanket uh, yesterday. She was asking about a man, another man blanket. I know she's got a beach house blanket going. She's got a supernova blanket going. But we also keep... I, I know, I was just like... It's funny how when people, you know, be mean, it's like, what have you ever done? <laughs> I'm proud of my work. Someday, if I ever get tired of doing the six-day blanket I'll make the seven day blanket and then I'll do that for 10 years 15 years how old is the the six day kid blanket was designed in 2007 <laughs> so how long is that who 
who was doing the math for me before, Cindy. You don't feel good. Oh. I hope you didn't pick up whatever's going around. It's like everybody is sick. And everyone I've talked to has been like, oh yeah, I had that and I coughed for months. I'm like, great. Seventeen years. I mean, to be honest, though, it wasn't really until about 2016 that I noticed it was like going viral and people were making it. And then I started to like monetize it and make more patterns and stuff like that. What the heck is happening here? This yarn's a little splitty. I mean, you do get used to it after a while, but I don't know. I feel like maybe a um, one hook down would have been a smaller hook might have been better. You're stressed. Got a bad reaction to stress. And oh my God. I'm sorry. I hear ya. I said I was going to drop my links at the end of the row, and I didn't do it. What kind of edge should I put on this?
I like to do at least six rows each time I sit down. So this is my third row. Each repeat of the pattern has six rows. So that's basically a stripe, but the stripe goes from row six to row five. So six, seven, two, three, four, five. That's how the rows are numbered. It's a little wonky. And I keep the rows the same in all the patterns. It just helps me when people say, I'm on row blah, blah, blah of the blah, blah, blah pattern. You know, and I know if it's row two, it's going to be a granny row. If it's row five, it's going to be double crochet. Sometimes I think ahead. I get some things right. Do I have a tutorial up about the stitch? Which stitch? Well, this isn't a stitch, this is a pattern. It consists of different rows of different stitches. I have replays of all these lives that I've done and I slowed it down in the beginning, but right now I'm, it's just busy work. But replays of all these lives are on my YouTube. But you really can't make the six day kid blanket just from the video. You need to follow the pattern. Hi.
doing the six day ridgy ditch blanket. If you hit the pole, I, I don't know how to do that. Um, but if you click on the pole, it has all the details with all the yarn and everything I'm making, everything I'm doing, what size hook, etc. Yeah, I got that from Howie the Crab. Thanks for following. Here we go. Thanks for bringing your friends, Andrew. Andrew keeps a tight ship around here, muting all them drama mamas. Oh, thank you. There, it's mood polish, so when it gets cold, they get really dark. Thanks for following, random human. Remember when they made the crackle nail polish? <laughs> I don't think I ever did that one, but I like the um, I like the um, it's it's cat eye and color change, so it has like the little magnet where you make the cat eye, and they always laugh at me. They're like, I thought the trend was over. And then sometimes they're like, oh, cool. But sometimes they like straight up make fun of me. And I'm like, I don't care. I like it. Everyone needs to hydrate. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Man. I think the cold is really like getting to people's brains. <coughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but you know what happens when people say stuff like that to me? I just don't go back there. Ain't no one got time for that. I don't go back there and I don't tag them on my channel.
I like that one. Everyone needs to hydrate. <laughs> it's so true, man. Everyone needs to crochet something soft and fuzzy. Hey, Rainy Mad, Rainy Mad 3. Working on your star blanket and came across this randomly. How's it going with your star blanket? I knit better than I do crochet. I need. I have a knitting project from a couple of years ago. I did a crochet along in my group for the wonderful Wallaby sweater and I bought really nice yarn to make myself a sweater. And my, um, my group finished their projects before I finished mine and I lost my notes. And it's been like a while since I worked on it and I can't remember what, uh, I can't remember what I, what I did. Cause I know I had to make some alterations to the pattern because I wasn't making gauge and now I don't remember. I had like a schematic where I had it all drawn out what the measurements would be and stuff. And I am lost. I am lost. And I have that really beautiful sweater, really beautiful yarn. The sweater's three quarters of the way done. And, um, I was, it's like a hoodie sweater, very casual. Like, um, it's called the wonderful wallaby. It's a great, like, basic hoodie sweater with a pocket in the front and you make it all in one piece you don't have any seaming and you do the sleeves and then you attach the sleeves to it and you keep going around and it's a great great knitted project um and everybody who made it in the little crochet knit along that I did loved it and um, they finished theirs, and I never finished mine. Um, the project I'm working on right now is the Six Day Ridgy Ditch Blanket. Cindy says, seven years. Thank you, Cindy. Cindy's doing my math for me. I need you when I'm writing my patterns. Probably make a lot fewer mistakes. Let's see. Pretty good run. Still going strong. I know, right? I haven't even written my book yet. I haven't even written the six-day blanket book. I'm going to do that this year. This is the year. Um, Let's see. Angie says, I have so many unfinished. Hold on. I got to scroll that. I have so many unfinished projects. I teach knit and crochet and started projects for various classes, but never finished because the objective to teach. Yeah, I have a few of those um, hanging around and I actually started, um, I actually started doing the entire project from start to finish on my lives and I don't have as many of those anymore. And I have just found that for whatever reason, people do want like they want to see the whole thing, which I think is crazy because I could have, you know, like I could have finished 22 uh, stripes of this pattern on, you know, off camera and just shown the tricky bits, but people don't seem to want that. They want to see the entire thing. So those, like the tutorials that I have up that are just like, Here's this part. Here's this part. Here's this part. Those are the ones that people get mad about. But I used to do like, because often I will release patterns in sets of like three and the people will be like, where's a tutorial? Where's a tutorial? Where's a tutorial? So I'll do a crochet along <coughs> and I'll get everybody started and I'll just do like the tricky bits 
on in the crochet along and over so my brand is the six day whatever so I'll do six days of crochet along and I'll try and get all the you know like all the tricky bits of all three patterns in in those six days and it just it's just a lot and then I'm exhausted and I never go back and edit the videos and it's just not it's just not an ideal way to teach um, but when I did that then I had I had a bunch of those projects I found a hexagon cardigan uh, a couple hexagon cardigans that I had done that I forgot about when I was working on the hexagon cardigan uh, pattern um, not last year but the previous year 2022 that was like my main pattern for that year so I found a couple of those kind of lurking around and um, I finished up one of them it's actually sitting right there I finished that up one day all it needed was like one buttonhole band and the ends woven in um, and I ordered some buttons from Etsy that I'm waiting to come in to finish it up. And I have a bunch of tree skirts that are in various stages of completion. And I think I'm just going to frog them. I think I'm just going to frog them. I don't think I'll ever go back. And it, sometimes I think, oh, well, I might have to go back to those videos and... I'm not going to remember what I did if I have to go back to those videos, you know, I might as well just start fresh. One of the ladies in my uh, membership community, Pat, she uh, took all her works in progress and put them in baskets and put them out in front of, out in like her living room space where she crochets and watches TV and she put them like out in front of the TV so she would see them there. And she said the year she did that, she got a lot of them done. Hi, Linda. Welcome. Oh, it's 2 a.m. in the UK. Sorry you can't sleep. We're still here crocheting in the U.S. of A.
Oh, wait, I missed something over here. Somebody said it's going to take longer than six days. Well, you know, this the whole six-day title, um, the first blanket was a toddler blanket, and it was made with chunky weight yarn, and it just happened to take me six days. Most of the patterns can be done in six days, but if you upsize like this one that I'm doing, no way. I'm already, this is already day eight. I'm already on day eight of this one, and I figured out what at the beginning of the call that I needed 14 more stripes. So after this one, it'll be 13 more stripes. And I'm doing about one stripe, a little more than one stripe per day on these lives. So I'm, you know, my goal was to finish by the end of January and I don't think I'm going to make it because I got sick. I always say, oh, I'll go live every day or I'll do a marathon. I could do a marathon. Um, somebody asked me to do a marathon, but usually when I do a marathon, I do like, um, thank you. I'm do, I, I am feeling better. It's just like lingering, uh, this cough and I'm, I'm very tired. I'm just really tired. I do have to go into town and get a mammogram um, on Wednesday this week. So maybe I will call my doctor and see if I can get an appointment to stop in on Wednesday. What really helps? Well, I have my um, honey and ginger tea from the Korean grocery store. And that actually really helps too. And I have, um, I put some turmeric in it and some other herbal tea that I had on hand. And I've been drinking that. That does help. I had a big jar of citron and honey ginger um, tea uh, that I took to my friends. And because um, I knew she would like it. And I drink it every night and we were drinking it like crazy. We killed that jar in like a week. I mean, we just killed it. And then on the last day she looked at it and she was like, oh, this has something in it that I'm allergic to. And I was like, oh, oops. I made myself some chicken broth. Um, right when I got home. I should maybe do another batch of chicken broth for myself. <coughs> maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Because that always helps too. Well, I mean, I've been sick for like three weeks at this point, so... It's just lingering. I mean, I had um, I had the nasal congestion so bad. I had a really bad sore throat. I lost my voice. I couldn't even talk. I had laryngitis and a sore throat so bad. And I really thought at one point I should probably go get a Z pack. And I'm I'm kind of glad I didn't do that because you know all that dried up on its own. I just have the lingering, um, you know, cough and post-nasal drip, and I hope it goes away soon. Getting a lot of rest. Oh, yeah, I've had some difficulty swallowing.
Thankfully, when I went up to um, Norfolk uh, right after I got back, and I was feeling good for a couple days, and then I like took a turn and started feeling crappy again, but I did make it to um, Norfolk because I had an appointment up there, and I went to um, I went to Costco to get a new vacuum cleaner, and I bought. A bunch of like and I don't usually buy these things but especially since I have such a long drive but I had like those insulated bags in my car and I thought I'll just get some pre-made stuff because I haven't been feeling good and let me just try some of these things and um, you know and I won't have to think about cooking so much and um, I'm really glad I did that I got like some chili and some pre-made soup. Uh, I, I forget now because I've eaten them all. I ate the last one today. Um, but I'm really glad I did that because I really was not feeling like cooking or anything at all. So if I hadn't done that and I hadn't made that big batch of uh, chicken broth, I would not have been eating too much. What's happening here? I feel like am I off? Am I doing this right? <laughs> yeah, I always do a big batch and um I just was doing I just was doing the broth and then I had some rice noodles. And I was just like heating up the broth and just like sticking some rice noodles in it. Like that was dinner a few times. And I was glad I had that stuff from Costco. I have some, um, I have like some, you know, tin fish salmon and stuff like that that I could eat but I just haven't had that much of an appetite this is row three Always goes really quick because you get to work into the spaces. Yeah, I had to gargle salt water a few times. I was, man, my throat. Well, that definitely does not look centered right there. <laughs> this is what happens when I talk. Yeah, I skipped three right there. Let's just go back. <coughs> it's not that far. I was like, that's weird. It looks weird.
Good night. Ooh, grab yourself something good. I think this orange is the end of the sequence, the color sequence. I think this is one. So it's one, two, three. This is the fourth one. So I'm almost halfway there, I think. I like yellow. Yellow feels cheerful. See, I'm in a much better mood than when I logged on. Crochet is a wonderful hobby. Hey, Mallory. Welcome to the addiction. It's a very addictive little pattern.
Andrew, you have some nice friends. I started to feel a little bit of like um, stress right here in my thumb. That's why I stopped. It's a little puffy right there. I have to get my um, infrared heating pad at night. I haven't been putting my hand in that at night like I was. I was like kind of faithfully doing that every night. I don't know what happened. I think maybe I packed it up to take it with me. Well, I mean, some of those, some of those people should be blocked and not allowed back into your life because that's not just not being nice. That's just downright bullying what you sent me the other night. What's happening? Don't have to let anyone speak to you like that. That's not appropriate at all. I was thinking about it today too. Um, it, it's really not okay at all. I was telling my sister about it and she was shocked and horrified. can take their drama elsewhere. Whoops.
Oh my goodness, I'm getting really tired. What row did I start with tonight? I think I started with row five. I did a lot last time. I don't remember how many rows I did, but it was more than six. It was more than one full repeat. It was like a repeat and a half. I like when I get to do two color changes in one <laughs> in one live. I don't think I'm gonna hit that today. I think I got one more row in me. That's what I'm thinking. You see what side? Yeah, I like to end on. I like to end on this side. So yeah, looks like I ended with. So I, I'll. If I end on row four, I'll have done a full repeat. I can't stop without having done at least one full repeat, but I'll, I'll be disappointed in myself because I wanted to do more. Because you know, I have 13 more stripes to go. That means if I only do one stripe, one full repeat per live, then I have at least 13 more lives to go and that doesn't even include the border. Oh, well, what's the rush? There it is. Wow, it's all the way down there. I missed it. Thank you for following. Let me do a Ricola this time. How many cough drops have I had on this live? I feel like this is at least my fourth one. Yes, I'll send it. I was just thinking about that. You want to get in there and get them goodies. Get all those new patterns that are coming.
I think I'm going to have a lot of yarn left over from this, actually. I think I ended up getting three skeins of each, but I, these bonus bundles have a lot. I mean, I'm going to say that there is more than half of a skein left. I have to think about what color I'm going to use on the edge. I really like the yellow. And I really like the denim. I don't know. I gotta get some design ideas for what I want the edge to look like, the ridgy edge. I have a ridgy edge that I did on the baby blanket and the ridgy ditch stars. I could do the same edge again. Okay, I'm going to do one more row after this. And then I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to take some Robitussin and maybe work on my chaos a little bit in front of the TV. can find anything decent to watch. This is going to be hard to work on and this gets much bigger. It feels good to say I'm almost halfway there. <laughs> I'm almost halfway done. Thank you. Appreciate it. I like purple and yellow next to each other. I like purple and green next to each other. That's one of my favorite color combinations. And I like orange and blue. This yellow is really cheerful. One of the other yellows I had was a mustard yellow and I love mustard yellow, um, but it just, I don't know, it just looked blah in this uh, project. So yeah. Thanks for following.
I guess I didn't get to the middle yet. Thanks for following. I'm almost done. I'm just wrapping up this row. There's my little cheer marker. I feel like the Ricola works a little bit better than the other one, the Halls. Ricola. I don't know. The Halls feel like they're doing more because of the eucalyptus. It like goes up your nose.
<coughs> All right, almost done. I got tired about halfway through the last row. Ran out of steam. Ran out of stuff to yak about. Everybody stays well, stay warm, stay safe. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Hopefully I'll be back tomorrow. We'll see how I'm feeling. Get this bad boy wrapped up. Blanket takes stamina. Especially a six-day blanket that takes you know, 26 days. <laughs> Here we go. Doesn't that look nice? It feels nice too. It doesn't, I know it's recycled yarn, but it doesn't feel plasticky. It feels, it feels really good. All right, my friends, stay well. I'll see you soon. Bye.